Hello and welcome. This video is brought to you by TheStreamingAdvisor.com. Tailor your entertainment with streaming. And you might notice we are looking at a different version of the Fire TV interface. This is the newest update for the Fire TV and it really changes the look and the feel of the device a lot. This part of it, which is just your basic content rows from the homepage, this looks a lot like the uh, you know the standard version. It looks it should feel pretty familiar to anybody who's used Fire TV or even an Android TV for that matter. But what they've changed a lot is these tabs at the top. They've made a lot of different changes and they've changed the way that the menus look as well. So while the home stayed pretty much the same, there's a lot of new changes. For instance. Let's take a look at the library. The library section is where you're going to find anything that you own. This is things that you've purchased and bought, as well as things you've added to your watch list. So anything that you wanted to get back to, if you added it to the watch list, it's going to be available right there on the home screen so that you can check it out and watch when you please. It includes everything that you've rented and so on. The watch list is always helpful because you never know what you're going to find out there and want to get back to later. We already sort of covered the home screen, but something new in this is the Fire TV Tips and Tricks. This is help videos that kind of do what I do. It'll show you how to find this, how to find that, but it's always available right there. Hopefully they keep that updated so as other things arise, you'll be able to find out what's going on. But you know, here it shows you what you need to do if you want to watch things for free. We're going to cover that in the video later on, but we just wanted to show you what that is. So don't forget about the Fire TV tips and tricks. It can save you some time that you might waste going onto Facebook or something like that and asking a bunch of questions. Find. Find is a brand new section that's never been out there for the Fire TV. You can access the basic search from this, but it also breaks things down by, as you see, movies, TV shows, and App Store. We're going to start with the App Store because that's gotten a real kind of facelift. It shows you what you have on your device. Or actually, this is everything we've ever downloaded from Fire TV. So things that even aren't even on the device are listed, as well as the things that we have installed. But you see that it keeps up with all of this. So if you've been using Fire TV for a long time, the All section is going to have quite a bit of things. But on the other hand, since this is kind of a fresh setup, if you go to Installed on this TV, you'll see only these apps. These are Actually, all Amazon-based apps, even IMDb TV. If you didn't know it, Amazon owns IMDb TV. That's why you see IMDb TV things in Amazon Prime. The not installed is, again, the things that we have downloaded before, apps that we own, but they are not currently on this device. But that's a kind of, you know, I, th I feel like that helps you zero in on things a little bit. You know what you got, you know what you might need, and you go from there. We're going to go ahead and add Downloader because that's one of my favorite apps. It helps with a lot of extras and, you know, if you want to get into side loading, it's right there. It still gives you the same basic instructions and information. So... That is that. You can open it directly after you download it if you like. And you'll see there's the downloader. Click allow. And you're ready to go. So we have now added an app. Back to the home screen. Let's take a look at some of the rest of what you can do in your apps. So when you have your apps, it lists things as favorites. And that's at the very top, but you can put things right at the front of your list by going to the apps, pressing the little three line button, and you can just tell it to move it to the front or uninstall it, as you saw. But while we 
install an app and then uninstall it. See right now, now it's right at the top of the list. You can rearrange things in that screen. You know, you can put YouTube second, whatever you like. So more in the find menu, it has categories down here. And what that's going to do is bring up as many titles as it can that kind of fall into the genre that you choose. Important note, though, not everything in this list is free. Some things are going to be from subscription services. Some things are going to be available via Amazon Prime if you've got it. Some things are going to be IMDb TV. It could be Pluto TV. You never know. But the only way you can find out how to get a hold of something is to actually click on it. So this version of Total Recall is through Netflix. What's Wonder Woman? HBO Max. No big surprise. Karate Kid, or the next Karate Kid. If you didn't know this, this is the Karate Kid without Ralph Macchio. But as you go through, you see, you, you, you'll see different things. So, you might be invited to sign up for something. You might just be able to launch right in for free. It all depends. There's a way to zero in on that a little bit more closely when you get into the actual movies and TV section. So we'll show you that. So let's jump into free. And everything you see here is going to be free. This is a list of free apps that you can go ahead and download that have free content. And then Amazon has organized things into little rows the way that they always do. You'll notice that a lot of the things are from IMDb TV. Like I said, that is an Amazon thing. They sell ads for that, so you watch commercials, and Amazon makes that money. Not a big surprise that they're going to put themselves out there first. But you will find things in this free section that are not straight from Amazon. Because, like I said, there are a lot of free apps out there. Even the ones that are listed here aren't the only free ones. Trust me. Jumping into the movies, you'll see what I was trying to explain. That there are ways to see what is totally free on the Fire TV. Where you're going to find that kind of information is by jumping on free to me. But you'll see that this breaks things down at the beginning with everything. The free, the free things are all mixed in with the pay things, but it's going to give you kind of a clue in as to what it's, you know, based on what it's called. So, like, if the row says Prime, you know, Prime Video, that's going to be free if you have Prime. If it says something like, you know, In Cinemas Now or, you know, Premium Rental or something like that, you see Early Access, that's going to be something that you pay for. And usually about $20, just so you know. When you look into Free to Me, though, every single thing on the screen is free. This is free... If you have signed in to your apps, as well as things that are just straight up from free free movies and things like that. Things like Tubi, Pluto, things like that. But you can go into this and just kind of kill the tension. You don't have to wonder, now wait a second, how do I get this? How do I get that? If you click free to me, it is free to you. That's a helpful feature. That's, that's something that they carried over from the last version of the operating system. What's this? Thing? See, HBO. The reason the Bee Gees thing came up for me is because I do subscribe to HBO. So that came in. If you don't subscribe to HBO, it's not going to show you that. And it works that way with other apps. Things from Netflix and so on. You know, if you want to zero in on things that you want to order, it's very obvious. Then it has the genre breakdowns like in the rest of the section. In the genre breakdowns, it's the same as before. You might click on something that happens to be free, like this Atlantis here. Or you might click on something that, you know, requires Prime. And sometimes you'll click on something that actually has to be rented or paid for, say. Kind of nice the way that they were all like lined up that way. But... That is the way the movie section works, and the TV section is the same deal. You go in, it has free to me, render by, and so on. 
So that way, like I said, I, I think it's nice to put it out there. Some people wonder, well, you know, what can I get or what can't I watch? Things like that. This is going to answer that question for you really quickly. But this whole section here is pretty new and exciting. It's it's a different, very different look. I'm going to jump into documentaries. Just take a look at what they got there. Documentaries have gotten more and more popular over the last couple of years. I don't know why, but they've gotten... I guess people are <laughs> finding they're running out of scripted things to watch. I think it's Mick Foley, isn't it? But... Do this, you'll see, again, it's a mishmash of different sources with a lot of Netflix. Where is this one? This is on Hulu, okay? But that is the TV section. All right, so back to the home. Let's look at the live section. The live section hasn't been completely set up yet, the way that we did in our previous video. But what it does from out of the box is it shows you things that you can subscribe to through Amazon Prime channels, as well as gives you a feel for the live TV apps they've got, like Sling TV and so on. Now there have been some changes recently to the Prime Video app, if you're unaware. This has the newest version of it. This has profiles in it. You'll see up in the left-hand corner. But this breaks down kind of like you've always seen. Amazon's good at categorizing, whether it's you know, socks on the internet or movies and TV shows. The difference between this app and, say, the homepage is that there's more things directly centered around Amazon and more things that are trying to get you to buy things from Amazon. So you'll see things like, you know, inexpensive movies or 99 cent purchases and things like that. Let's see, there's holiday deals. Free to Me does the same thing as the last version did. It's just inside of the Amazon app. The Amazon Channels section here is where you can either watch things that are available through IMDb TV or you can sign up for subscriptions to different services. We have a breakdown of categories to look at right here. This again, like the free TV shows or even uh, the paid TV shows and movies section, some things are going to be available through Prime. Some things are not going to be available through Prime. It all just depends on what it is that you're clicking on. Again, if you want to see what's completely free to you based on your subscriptions and your Amazon Prime membership, just click free to me. My stuff is a section just like you've seen before. This is like the library. And then deals is where you're going to find the best prices on content that is being sold through Amazon. So that's a look at those basics. And what we're going to do now is we're actually going to jump in to the settings. Settings looks more or less the way that it did before as far as the icons go. But it's a completely different layout. It's no longer that long row. But you can still access everything, like your applications right here. If you ever have to you know, change a setting on something, and you can go into Manage Installed Applications. Display and Sounds looks the way that it always did. The biggest difference between this setup and the one on the old Fire TV is that the other one had a lot more yellow. This is just gray and white. They're trying to go more basic. If you have to update your profile or your settings in that, you can come here and actually add a profile. That's a new feature for this device is that you can add profiles for the device itself. Before you could add profiles in Prime Video, but for instance, it recognizes that we've got some profiles set up already. So we can jump in and we can add my daughter's profile and give her the choice of jumping into her own profile later on. This is really great because what it's going to do is once you have this set up, 
then if you're in your profile and you start watching a you know a given slate of things if you like crazy things about Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster it'll find more things about Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster if you like things about you know documentaries about Michelangelo it's going to find you documentaries about Michelangelo and other artists and just start suggesting that the way Amazon always does with everything else so that's really cool I think that's pretty snazzy your notifications bar here just tells you what's up with your system you see that you know it sees that we downloaded the downloader it always feels like a mouthful under equipment control is where you're going to set up something like if you have lights or doorbells and cameras controlled by Amazon this is not where you go for your basic settings on the Fire TV itself under live TV is where you set up everything so that you can sync like Sling TV or YouTube TV, Pluto TV into the live TV section. We'll probably have a separate video about that. Very important, if you're adding any controllers, you've got to do it through that. It's pretty self-explanatory. The Alexa app has its own section, but really you have to do most of your stuff on Alexa via you know, like the website. Your preferences here are helpful. You can go here to find out what it is that you want, you know, put out in front. And especially important, make sure you have the right time zone. It's kind of annoying when the time is wrong up in the corner, I think. Just like that tips and tricks row, they have a help section here. That will even help you contact if you need to get help. Amazon's always had pretty good customer service, I've got to say. For a, a monster corporation, it's got, you know, it's got that personal touch when you need it. Another important personal touch is the accessibility section, especially audio description. A lot of people I know who have seeing problems definitely use audio description a lot because it will kind of talk along with you, it has to tell you what menu you're on, things like that. And My Fire TV is the all-important menu where you can jump in, do your updates, reset it without unplugging it. To do an update, you go to About and then Check for Updates. But we just did one like a minute before this video, so there's really no reason to do it. My Fire TV is also where you set up things like if you're trying to sideload or something along those lines. This is where you would change that. But what they've done with this operating system now is you've got to access and authorize each app individually. So we can add it for a downloader, but if you add something else like the App Toid Store, you're going to have to access that, tell it to allow it. But that's that. Now that's a, you know, it's, a, it's a pretty basic system, pretty, pretty uh, straightforward, I think. In general, this remake is very pretty. I mean, you can see it. It's, it's, it's got a lot of nice balance. It offers a lot to work with. And while it's a change from what we've been seeing up to this point, it's the third or fourth update on the interface that Amazon has done since it's come out. While we're at it, I'm just going to add my profile. You see you get to the profile by going all the way to the left. And it already recognizes my profile. Basically, if you have a profile in the Amazon Prime app, it saves it You know, when you sign in and sync your information. It doesn't have a whole lot of icons, though, does it? I was hoping I'd find something kind of cool. Guess we'll just go with the I don't have a profile picture icon. All right, we have added. So that's it. That's the Fire TV with the brand new interface. If you don't have it yet, be patient. I checked every day for God knows a week or so. I kept reading, oh, it's on this, and it's on that, it's on this. This, for your information, is the Fire TV Lite. So, you know, they had advertised this 
you know, facelift was going to be available on that device first. But it's rolling out for pretty much all of the Fire TV models, as long as you don't have maybe the, the very first one or something like that. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please subscribe, share this video with your friends, and as always, I'm Ryan Downey, the streaming advisor. Stream on, my friends.